Hey, everybody. Pete A. Turner, executive producer and host of your Break It Down show. I wanted to do today's live teaser intro. Plus, this will also be recorded on the regular show intro as well. And I record everything on my Zoom H6 with my Shure SM microphone headset. Hey, uh, here's the guest today. Her name is Ray, and she's Scottish, and she sings country music. Pretty cool. You go to Ray Music, R-A-I-E Music. Dot com and you will get to learn more about what she does. She's also on Bandcamp, so check out Ray there. If you have any questions or anything at all, all of the answers can be found in the show notes, breakitdownshow.com. She'll be the headline show for the next 24 hours. Uh, you can always go here to the YouTube channel, and you can also see things there. All right, who is Ray? Well, she's a musician. She plays soul music. She plays country music, and she's Scottish. That's all great. We got her because our good friend Wes Maybe the Wesaneta, is a, a, a producer of her last album, Riding the Healing Train. And so we have the two of them on, plus John doing the primary hosting duties. I'm there to shout out from the background because they got it covered. But I think you're going to love this episode because Ray is powerful. All you got to do is go listen to some of her music and you will get it right away. Well, we love her so much. And of course, anybody who's ever heard Wes do his work, uh, listen to our episode with Matt Hoy, listen to any of the Wes Maybe episodes, and you will get why we love Wes so much. He's fantastic. Hey, if you love what we're doing here, please support the show by subscribing. It always helps to do that. Sharing the episodes, commenting under the episodes. All of these things are like cash to us. It's true. It's hard to compete in the world of podcasts. We're getting bigger and better all the time. I have some huge, huge, huge guests coming up. You're going to love them. Uh, just as an example, if you're new to the show, this week we had Peter Van Buren talking about the COVID breakout. He's a New York-based former State Department guy who's an author and does all kinds of great things. Today, it's Wes and Ray. Tomorrow, it's Peter Jang, who's a, uh, a, a screenwriter slash stuntman slash actor who's actively working in Hollywood. Uh, just to stay with that theme, we'll have Billy Samoa Salibi on, and he also uh, is connected to Hollywood, has a podcast you will love him and then there's brad johnson talking about intel stuff because you know how we like to go spy versus spy he, that's coming up so many great episodes coming up you're gonna love it oh and by the way next week we have two fighting legends it's a week full of legends but we have don fry and frank shamrock are both coming up that doesn't excite you i don't know what to do hey subscribe breakitdownshow.com go there get on the mailing list let me let you know when the, the shows come out okay I'm going to shut up. I'm going to say one more thing. You know, around here, we have a powerful, powerful, powerful charity charter. And we select, as always, Save the Brave, savethebrave.org. We help veterans with PTSD get through those tough times, build community around them, give them some purpose and get them to work. So if you want to help, that's a place you can go. Savethebrave.org. Your time, your attention, your money, any little thing is going to be more than what we had today. And we greatly appreciate it. All right. Here comes Ray and Wes. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbin. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morales. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. This is Ray, and you're listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. All right, Ray, otherwise known as Rachel Bennett, is an artist, a singer, songwriter, and joining us along with Ray is our good friend, Wes Maybe, the Wesonator. Uh, they're working together, which goes a long, long way, and we're excited to hear what it is you come up with. Now, Ray, uh, you uh, tell us your very interesting story about how you and Wes became uh, co-writers. Is, is it safe to say co-writers? Are you giving him some credit for the creative process? Oh, I think, yeah, that's, that's definitely increasing. And there's some co-writing on the album, which is great. Mm -hmm. But when I met Wes, it was kind of about 2014, Wes, maybe 13, 14. Was it? Oh, might be longer than that. Maybe 12, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we got together because Wes was recommended to me by a friend whose some brother-in-law played bass in the studio with Wes recording and um, down at Rack. And I don't even know which band that was. It was Phil Greenwood's brother-in-law. So um, Nashville Phil, Wes. Nashville Phil, indeed. Yeah. 
so he recommended because I was looking for a producer to do an EP and um as soon as I met Wes I just felt he was the right guy uh so he straightened out some of the recordings that we'd done with someone else and it went really well the EP was such a lovely success and the single that came out from that talking about you was did really well so um then we just I, I just had so much fun working with Wes that I felt like we could go further and I'd written a lot of stuff so we talked about doing an album yeah that's it went from there <laughs> so I want to tell our listeners first of all you should go to raymusic.com and it's spelled r-a-i-e music.com you can hear songs you can read a bio contact info all of that stuff now I want to point you there and I want you to listen to things because dear listeners what you're going to find is that Ray is a soulful bluesy country music artist don't let the accent fool you um, <laughs> all of those things so Wes let me ask you what was mm. it that, what was it that made Ray exciting to work with for you what oh well obviously the voice <laughs> immediately uh, starting point, yeah. came out you know me I like I like a lot of different styles of music and stuff and and you know if there's if there's a bit of Americana and country to be had, I'm I'm there, you know. But but it's been quite a long journey for Ray, I think, to uh, to get to where we are now. Because you know the, the EP was the EP was lovely, and there was you know I th I think the EP was maybe more sort of soul, but there were like slight jazzy influences there and stuff like that. And it's been a long journey to 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 find. The um, the more Americana, more country, country rock kind of vibe, which is a lot more obvious in in this album than than on the EP. But yeah, it's just it's just the the, the musicality and 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 the storytelling. Ray's not just a, a singer who sings a song. She 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 has to tell a story, and and every song has a very big story and a very big topic attached to it. So. You know, if you listen to the lyrics, uh, you know, so some of it's not for the faint hearted. Some some of the topics are quite, <laughs> quite, quite heavy duty. But, you know, we're we're we're, we're getting we're getting through a lot of that stuff. And we're, we're also dealing with, you know, very relevant, relevant topics, suicide and, 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 and murder and, and false imprisonment and all that stuff interweaved with some with some joyful happy stuff as well so it, it, it's always a journey which is which is really what i enjoy in the music it's like you know it's not just a, a musical journey it's a massive emotional journey as well is this catharsis for you ray to some degree and as it is with many artists or are you uh, projecting topics onto our listeners that that are uh timely and topical and all of that or or is this this work that you're doing pure catharsis for you where where are you on the scale there i think it's a bit of both to be honest i felt that it was important to fight for the right or fight for truth um that's kind of stayed with me and in, in the music that i listened to then and i kind of grew up with protest singers and people like dylan and baez and people like that and yeah. i find that music like that's always really moved me and i've always felt like it was important to listen to the stories and the lyrics but on top of that yeah that I kind of tend to respond to things that have happened around me or that I've been involved in, even family things. But I think maybe, yeah, it, it, it sometimes things I get told a story or something happens and the only way that I can respond is to write a song because the thing moves me too much or, or I feel I need to tell everyone. So it's kind of a bit of both, really. You know, the thing that Americans, at least those of us who have paid attention, have found is that Wes mentioned Americana. There's a certain way that uh, that folks in the UK take American influenced music and give it back to us better than they better than they heard it. Uh, <laughs> and you know that's an admission from from uh, somebody who loves rock and roll. If if there are uh, Wes some sonic influences that you heard working with Ray and from Ray as she as she melted out songs and emoted for you. Uh, can you can you name some artists that you think probably influenced Ray and that and that turned you on to working with her? Oh my God. Well I think I think in the in 
in in the recent album it's it's probably a good melting pot of of influences um and and i'm i'm probably largely to blame as well <laughs> bringing some some of that stuff to the table but you know i i, I always go i mean you know we've we've talked about you know all those amazing recordings and stuff like that and you know, I always, I always go back to you know things like Steely Dan and 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 the Eagles and the Doobie Brothers and all that stuff. So, I think, I think that's that's kind of what we try to try to pour into into this in, into this this album. The initial EP, I would say, just stands apart from from that because you know it, it came to me as as a finished recording which you know needed a little bit of a little bit of tlc to to get to where it needed to be but you know over the years it's, it's just you know gone more you know eagles doobie brothers steely dan all those you know all those amazing records and, and just immaculately engineered and produced things that probably influence both of us you know yeah yeah and, and a lot of the players involved as well you mentioned Steely Dan. Did I hear correctly that Elliot Randall played on this record? Yeah, Elliot, Elliot played on the uh, on the on the EP. On the EP, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ray, how was that working with uh, someone who's um, well? You didn't say that that they were an influence for you. Wes, I think said sonically that's what he was here. <laughs> how was that for you? Um, I mean, I think that was incredible and it was wonderful to meet Elliot and it was amazing. The guitar work that he put on the songs shifted the feel of, and I think he even helped me realise where I needed to be going with what I was writing, what Wes did with the EP. I mean, some of the stuff we kind of stripped back and almost reworked again. That definitely helped me understand my own songs. It's a crazy thing, you know, you can write songs and and still not be fully aware of exactly what it is you've written. And I think that's the, the beauty of collaborating with people, that you sometimes it takes someone else to come along to you and, and say, did you hear this? Did you hear what you've written? But obviously not say the words, just put something to it, a beat or some guitar parts, and you hear something that's liberating. So, you know, the way that I, I kind of reworked some of the singing over some of them, Goliath, talking about you, did we redo that? Uh, we did a mm, little bit, yeah. Wax and when yeah, we did we redid some of the vocals because the music had changed and it just felt um different and much easier. And and the thing about instrumental behind your voice, any singer will tell you this that if you get the right people working to play with, to sing with, your voice gets freed up. It really gets freed up. And if I listen to my voice on the EP, you know, there's some nice songs on there, but if I listen to it on the album now, I feel like it, it's much more free. I feel more like myself. And so I think, yeah, those influences, those guitar parts and, and people hearing that was really, really helpful. And it's just catapulted me into a whole new, I don't know, an era of creativity. I keep saying <laughs> Wes songs and Wes has said, I mean, we've written a couple more songs since then that they're going on album number two. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it, it just feels like a really positive musical vibe, as well as a you know a lovely friendship. It, it, it's a very positive musical vibe, and yeah. So I think bringing Elliot and John Klein on onto stuff earlier on the EP was a huge influence, and and has helped me do something I've never done before. I've never really let people in on my writing, and I've learned that that's. <laughs> It's a much better idea to to let people in and and help you. Yeah. All right. Especially when you have a cast like that. That's quality help. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm very aware of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I've got to say, without meeting words, I think my journey might have gone in a very different direction. It's been incredible and I'm, I'm thankful. I say that frequently as well. Uh, <laughs> Wes. <laughs> And that's just that's just because of how much we like burritos. Uh, that's right, <laughs> Wes. When you tracked this album, did you did you start with music, and did you uh, bring uh, did you bring Ray in last uh, to lay on top of the music, or how did you how did you track this sequentially speaking? How did you record this album? We recorded everything as live as possible. So, uh, all right. Well, we we had the 
the luxury of because Ray teaches at Goldsmiths and they have their own recording studio. Wow. So we had the luxury of being in that room. It's got a very nice console, got some good mics. Obviously, I bring a lot of my own stuff as well. But um, it, uh, the way the rooms are laid out allows you to record drums, guitars, and bass at the same time. So that rhythm bed went down live with Ray in the control room with me laying down a guide track. So, you know, that allowed for everybody to to get a feel for the, you know, for the music, for the emotion of the music. And then, you know, once once everything was laid down, we, we went back and the odd overdub, you know, an acoustic guitar here, some percussion there, uh, Fender Rhodes or a piano. Yeah. Not, um, but, you know, not a lot. generally Probably everything music. went down live. Yeah, that sounds terrific. Ray, mm. what was the process like for you compared to other recordings you've done in the past? I mean, it's nice to have accompaniment that's able-bodied and people who can contribute, like you mentioned, but as far as the recording process itself, what do you think that lent to to the work? Being in the room with the guys live was, was just such a vital experience. And it's not, it, I've done kind of stuff like that sometimes, but mostly, I mean, my studio experience in the past has been background vocals for a lot of people. And it's a really different, quite a clinical process. I mean, way back, I was doing reel to reel, like three girls maybe on mics and singing and live and getting it right first time type thing but that was a long time ago and then studios have changed a lot I'm sure you all know but um this was lovely because it was very organic and um just being in the room in the in the control room with Wes looking through the glass and seeing the guys vibing and coming back in and having a listen and all being very very present in that process was just great it's just so wonderful then I mean, John Klein was around even still when I was putting down my lead vocals and say, you know, able to kind of talk about what those vocals are helping him think about in terms of other guitar parts that might go on. There was still some sharing of ideas and to and fro even at the point when I was putting down my leads. Um, and that was lovely too, because it just felt like it didn't feel closed and clinical and... Um, compartmentalized like it can do in a studio it felt very open and warm and free like a, kind of like a live gig and the nice thing about that studio is there's a lot of daylight in there and there's a carpet that my greyhound loves so we kind of felt like we were home <laughs> um, we felt like we were in our house it was really cool it's just such a nice vibe and the assistants are nice you get tea and all that it's it's a warm studio it's got a good vibe which all helps but I think that again, I'm I'm going to say in in praise of ways you create a really good vibe. Ways there's no tension. There's no <laughs> tension is a killer when you're recording the, through your voice. It's just not great. So it's wonderful to be in that vibe. And and the more we went in, and we kind of did maybe like two or three songs every few months over mm. of almost two years. Um, we we did two or three songs over a Saturday and a Sunday. And we just kind of lived in there for hours and hours and hours. It was great. And that was lovely too, because it we felt like it was growing. We felt it growing like Chris Bell on the kit was coming in and was talking about not just playing the kit for different songs, but having this whole feel over the album, this rhythmic feel over the album. And you can really hear that when you listen to the album. There's a very defined sound on the rhythm section that is that is right for the songs but even though some of the songs are quite upbeat and others are more serious and maybe you know quite downbeat you still get that really energized kit on it and it is really beautiful so i yeah having people there and having that continuity was just magic <laughs> yeah well okay i don't think anyone's ever accused wes of being clinical so i think you went to the right place <laughs> <laughs> but Wes, how much I want to explore the word tension because you mm -hmm. use the word tension, Ray. How much do you do you want to take away tension and how much do you want to leave there? Because some of that is energy and some of that that energy comes across on the recording. Mm. Are you playing with that with Ray? Because you know, she's got she's got experience. And how much would you be playing with that? tension with another artist or, or does the music lend itself to any of that mm. well i I, th I think ray will be all right with me telling this story but there's one particular story about a song 
um, and it's it. Funnily enough, it, it's 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 the song that only has piano on it. It doesn't have any drums or anything else on it. Just grand piano, raised voice, and and I I did a couple of classical guitar lines over it later on. You know, the song's about her mom. You know, she's been singing this song forever. We know it inside out. It, it we, we've seen it live. There is actually a live recording of it that we did. Um, and it's fine and it's cool and it's lovely. And But when we were in the studio, Ray was singing it and, you know, she was singing it well, but somehow it wasn't, wasn't gripping me like it usually does. And I don't, I don't know why I did this, but I just, I, I, it was later in the day. I turned all the lights off in the control room so she couldn't see me. And I said, tell me the story of the song. And she went through the whole story. And at the end of it, she started crying and we were all crying in the control room. And I said, okay, now sing it. And you can hear that. And it's pure passion, pure heartfelt stuff. So, you know, maybe that's not talking about tension, but it's talking about emotion and, and, you know, half of me felt bad for pushing her that far, but the other half was like, yeah, come on. You've now got we've got, got it, take. <laughs> yeah. you know, and it was the one take. It was the one that, that ended up being the lead vocal, you know, and it, that, it kind of, you know, it kind of weaves in and out, you know, sometimes the guys are just spot on and they nail it. And sometimes, you know, there's a curveball in there that, that, they need to deal with, you know, there, there, there was a, I think there was a song, it was a couple of songs, me with my ridiculous ideas. I put in a couple of time signature changes and, and it, it threw Chris Bell, the drummer, threw him <laughs> a little bit on the day. You know, Cause you're going from four, four into three, four or into six, eight. And it's a bit of a, well, it's a bit of a mind fuck unless you're like a full on prog drummer and then it's fine. But it threw him for a little bit and he was, he was getting annoyed with himself up to the point where he just went in and bam, nailed it. It's like, yeah, you know, you can do it. <laughs> you just keep going. Ray, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was tension. That? <laughs> ah, yes, that was tension. Ray, is that how you remember the story that Wes described? Or do, oh, you, yeah. have anything, yeah. do you have anything to add? How was it for you? Great opportunity to remember why I wrote the song. And I, and I think sometimes what happens, and actually the way Wes led up to that story is part of the issue because sometimes if you play a song, and I, I originally played that song with a band who were beautiful people, but the music wasn't the same. And um, I think sometimes what happens is, is you write a song, everyone thinks if you're a singer songwriter, you write material and it's all just really flowing and everything's great, but it's not like that. The songs can be elusive and they leave you, you know, for a minute or they, they can disappear out of your emotional memory. Um, it's a bit like being an actor, and I, I did train as an actor many years ago. So kind of someone putting me through some emotional stress wasn't totally new, but I think I'd need to trust that person, and I do trust Wes a lot. So it didn't feel unkind or uh, uh, uncomfortable, and I kind of realised why it was happening, but I, I bought into it immediately, and, and that felt okay, felt really fine. And the, and the, and the telling the story about my mum and the, and the memories of all of that is so real. It's still very present that the minute I started to talk about that, the sense of the lyric just returned. And, and so you, you, I guess you can't hide that in the timbre of your voice. You know, the, the truth will out, as they say. So, yeah, I think that's what you're hearing. It's the truth. And, and it was really lovely to, you know, I'd, I'd do that anytime. Yeah. I yeah. think you're you're making a point about the importance of a producer and artist having a trust for each other, oh, being willing to go to those places and and explore those emotions and capture them. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything I want our listeners to get excited about, it's about the, the fact that you guys have that relationship where you can really be expressive and where the expression really matters. And again, I want to point our listeners to raymusic.com. It's R-A-I-E music.com. So you can read about Ray and you can, what else can you do on that site? Can you buy the album? When's the album out? When's uh, you, have to, you have to go to Bandcamp right now. And I've got this guy. This is a little bit of a sad story, actually. I had the, the website made by a young man who sadly got killed in a, in a motorbike accident last year. 
and it's been quite a trial to sort out getting into the site and going into the back of it and everything. But I found a guy, Pete Arnstein, who's for me, but it, it's taken a while to find the right person. But you can go in and you can hear some tracks and you can get onto SoundCloud from there and listen to the whole album. And you can buy the album on Bandcamp. So, yeah, that's where okay. we're at. That so time. everybody go do that. Mm, yeah. So Wes, how quickly did you get comfortable working with Ray on that level? Pretty much immediately. I mean, you know, I remember when we started the EP, she just, you know, pop, popped down here and, the, you know, the little mix room that I'm sitting at now in, in, in the back of my garden. And oh, there used to be a lovely pub across the street. And, and if it was summer, you could just sit, sit outside and have something to eat and watch, watch the world go by and, and, you know, probably get smoke poisoning from London, tra <laughs> London traffic. But it was just immediately, you know, click, just hang out, talk about everything. Tell me the stories of the music. I need to know what it's about and, and stuff like that. It was like, you know, brother, sister kind of vibe. <laughs> wow. Sister I never had. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a recording nerd question then. If you could mm. take Ray to any room, any studio in the world that you think would suit her and suit her process, where would you take mm -hmm. her? Wow, just the one? Well, let's 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 uh explore. I mean, pick one for a piece of work. And if there's something else that you think would be suited somewhere else, tell us about it. Okay. Well, I'm I'm gonna pick. I'm going to pick two over here. I'm going to say Rack and British Grove. In the States, I want to say uh, Village Recorder. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah. Village Recorder. And, uh, you know, Pete was there. Pete was there. I know. He told me. <laughs> why, why Village Recorder? Well, hey, it's always been a dream of mine to work there. Um, sure. But it's just such a beautiful place, you know. I mean, and 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 there's that there's that crazy link with Elliot Randall again. I mean, we got to get this dude on the show. Um, you know, that's 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 where he recorded Reeling in the Years. So oh. there's that link. It's it's a gorgeous building. You know, Jeff Greenberg's a dude. So many amazing records have been made there, and it's and it's one of those old style, vintage, vibey places. You yeah. know. You know, you just you just walk in there and you just sniff the air and you go, yeah, cool mm -hmm. shit was done here. So <laughs> in that room, yeah, you know, and it's and it's not far from the ocean, so that's cool too. <laughs> Ray, I'll put the question to you: Are there any studios in particular where, if I just gave you an unlimited budget, said let's let's really go for it, record wherever you want, take Wes with you, where would you go? Well, I'd like to go to Rack Studios. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'd go down to Tennessee to Stax. I don't know. Okay. Ooh. History. <laughs> was, I don't know what that was. I think that room's a museum now. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's what I'm going for. I want to know what kind of Ford, vibe you're really yeah, into. Wasn't she? Frazy Ford did her something down there, and they made a nice job of that. Her All song. Right. And, um, I know uh, David Porter still has a studio in Memphis, and it's not in the okay. original uh, Stax building. But okay. He's still there, and he's still got yeah. a studio that he's been in for a number of years. So, sure, let's put you there. Where else? <laughs> that would make me very happy. <laughs> and then, yeah, I did. I did Metropolis as a as a young woman with some big bands, and I'd like to do that for the memory of that because you know, <laughs> for us then that was a big deal. You know, we were really like, wow, we're singing with KLF and Metropolis, and it was really cool. Uh, you know, things things that have led to me I've done a lot of little crummy studios as well and you get them back and you do a lot of crummy studios <laughs> yeah but yeah, yeah. No, no, it'd be cool those ones I think we should go to Blackbird as well okay <laughs> Wes where do you think Ray is headed what what kind of projects do you see for her going down the road and and I'm asking you this question first because I don't want your answer <clears throat> limited by what she wants to do Mm -hmm. if, if you were her a and r where would you take her career where would you take her artistry what would you make make her do two, three four albums from now if i was her a and r i would be an a and r 
It's hard for me to say because you know I'm I'm just I'm just a guy who wants to hole up in a recording studio and put microphones in front of people. So <laughs> going back to what you said earlier, John, about the uh, you know Americans giving British people their music and then they get it back done better. <laughs> You know, that's that's kind of that's kind of you know I where, I, where where I see her going. That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny that you mentioned that because it's 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 what Chris Chris Bell drummer and, and John Klein guitarist and I have been talking about, you know, when Ray's done her recording and I'm I'm isolated in here by myself and mixing stuff. I get the guys to come over and, and have a listen and stuff because it's always good to have an extra set of ears. And I trust those guys implicitly um they both brought that up as well they said you know it's like it, it's so cool because it's it's country but it's country done with an english kind of eh, attitude you know so you know i think i think obviously her music suits is very well suited for the american market and mm-hmm. you know i'd like i'd like to see ray ray break that market open that would be that would be really cool and i think that's where she wants to go as well anyway so you know and we're and we're and we're you know we're 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 in the process of writing already and a lot of the songs on on this album existed uh they were just kind of you know massaged a little bit and 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 poured into a a new jacket so and and but this new material is going to be fresh Hey, this is P.A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. But this new material is going to be fresh. I can just see it going more country, more Americana, Ray, country is rock. True? Sorry, is that true? Do you think yeah, it's I, in that direction? Yeah. yeah, I would like to uh, be heard by Americans because I think because of my Scottish roots, Scottish and Irish roots, I understand country music from a young age. We, you know, we. In fact, our our heritage is that we're a part of that music, you know, in a big way. Um, going back in time, obviously. And I think I understand it, and I think it understands me, and I think that I think I've got a lot to say that would be appreciated by American audiences. Tell us Americans why, why, why it is you identify with country music much, and what what part of that rich history you know speaks to you, and and that had had a Scottish contribution. Okay, in the past, obviously, um, Celts and and Celtic music was an influence in bluegrass, going back to times when. People that you can hear the kind of simple melodic influence that Scottish ballads had on that, and I think that's still with me, and and I think it's in my songs. Um, yeah, so so it's accessible for me. I, I think it's accessible, and I don't think I'm not pretending. I'm I'm coming from somewhere real. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up just outside the city of Glasgow, and then on a Saturday night in Glasgow, you hear a lot of country music. It's something I grew up with. Um, Irish and Scots are nuts for country music. <laughs> and I think they're nuts for it because, in a funny sort of way, it's the reverse of what you said. You know, our, our songs went over there and they they gave them back to us like that. <laughs> so, you know, but now I think it's, it, it's, a, it's a link and it's something you understand and it's something, you know, you can hear even in modern Scots, Scots artist that's a spectacular observation i'm really glad that you said that because uh it makes me feel really good and that you guys feel the 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 connection and that and that we've not betrayed the influence i also think that you know the uh rural roots and the human experiences that had to do with kind of country hardship and endurance and reward and all of those things uh wrap up into packages that we can look at and go that's a piece of me when you create and you have uh the country paintbrush in your hand so to speak and you know that you have you know this is your color palette this is you speaking in your native emotional language 
what is it you think that you that you would like to do next if I forced you to do something different? If I said, Ray, America loves this album, we want you to do something bigger, more adventurous, you know, maybe go a little less inside as you've done on this record, but reach out and reach out to the world. How do you do that? And what would you do? And what would you like in your toolbox? Because I'm giving you unlimited budgets for all of these questions. (laughs) Hire Wes. (laughs) I'm I'm cheap. (laughs) Uh, Definitely get on board some other country sounds and players who play country instruments that are not so commonly played here and types of fiddle, um, you know, lap guitars. Yeah, th- that kind of thing. I think yeah. um, that, that would feel great. And I think I would be definitely much more collaborating, definitely a lot more with Wes and John in terms of, you know, what we're writing for and what we're writing about. I feel I'm the kind of person that if you give me a subject matter, I'm, I'm quite easy with a pen. I can get going with lyrics. It's not difficult for me. But I think if we, if we were staying in the country genre, you're still talking stories and you're still talking protest, hardship, all those things that I personally in my own life have experienced a lot of um, and, and my parents and, you know, family and friends because of where we were raised and the, and the life there. But I think that's something that I can connect to on a bigger scale. So not just musically, but in terms of topic. I mean, Wes and me, are right, uh, we're writing something about Vietnam right now, which is quite interesting, isn't it, Wes? We're doing mm. Based on the Vietnam series that came on Netflix and it, it just, wow blew well it blew both our minds and we both kind of like talked about that and started writing some stuff and I think yeah but in terms of budget yeah I'd want to bring on players who understand those instruments in a Mm. way maybe some of our English or British players don't quite understand because they don't not really deeply seeped in that culture it's not that available here there are there are sections of the UK where you hear that music but you kind of if you go to Soho you go to a blues club for instance and to some degree you've got people like doing their 12 bar and they're they're really getting down and they love it all but there's a there's a little bit of a with the greatest respect for some of the serious players I've heard there there's a bit of a clique thing that goes on so it's quite kind of it's not about being difficult to access it or anything like that it's more that you have to have a name for your music. And if it doesn't quite fit into that, you, you're not going to necessarily go down in that blues club and get heard. So I'm I'm less keen on doing that kind of thing. And I'm more keen on just being heard around because I think what we're writing and what we're creating is something bigger than that. It, it, it does feel like country music, but it does feel like Americana and it feels like it could go more in that, in that appeal to a bigger, wider audience. Than, than saying, okay, it's blues or something like that. Yeah. I don't know if I've answered your question. I've oh, you plenty. Okay. Wes, <laughs> are you hearing those, uh, the voices of that kind of instrumentation in what, in what you're creating with Ray now? And, oh, totally. Uh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, we, you know, we've, 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 we've been sort of scraping away at that already, you know, and, 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 yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm immediately thinking, you know, pedal steel and all that stuff and proper country fiddle and all that stuff. So, I mean, there there are definitely serious nods to it on on the album already, but you know, like Ray said that, that there's a type of player and they live and breathe this shit and, and you can't you, you you can't take that away, you know. You can get close to it, but not quite. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I just have to put a massive shout out to to John Klein on this one because, you know, he's English. He's an English player. You know, he. Uh, some people might know him from Susie and the Banshees. Other people might know him from Sinead O'Connor. You know, he he is a monster on a guitar, and you know he'll you'll give him something, and he'll go away and. 
fucking mastered the shit out of it. When I first met John, I wasn't aware he could play country licks. And then, boom, he comes along and, you know, he goes out and buys a damn Telecaster just for this gig. Oh, <laughs> and, oh he was waiting for the excuse. Yeah, he sure. was waiting for the excuse. Of course he was waiting for the excuse. You know, how many guitars do you need? Always one more. Yeah. So, you know, he, he went there and he did it and he plays the hell out of that thing. And, wow, hats off to, to that man because, wow, he brought America several steps closer <laughs> oh totally totally yeah he he's a giant and he's a wonderful guy to work with really like wow into the detail and you know his we we kind of gave him the role of md on the live gig for the launch and it was just wonderful he he really pulled everything together in such a way that that it, the closeness to the album itself is just superb you know you're not listening to live music that's like Oh well, the album's really good, but when we heard the live band, rare, 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 you know, it's not like that. It really was superb, you know. Great guy to and, work with. And now yeah. you've got an actual American in the band. Yeah, <laughs> John <Yeah>. Dunn. <laughs> John Dunn, the the second guitarist. Mm. He doesn't sound American, but he's actually from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, he <laughs> he likes to keep that quiet. But sorry, John, it's oh, out. Gosh. Everybody yeah. to keep that quiet. Well, we're close <laughs> to still then. We're close to still. But a lovely player as well. Really lovely player and new in the band. And and I, I met him through Wes. And he came and it was kind of like, I think he felt he was auditioning or something. But I'd already knew it would be cool because Wes recommended him. But he came and played in my house just on a couple of songs. And I was blown away by how in touch she was. But also, mm. again, I'm really just so touched by how much work both John Klein and John Dunn put into, you know, learning the material and bringing it to a really kind of high energy, polished, beautiful vibe for the, for the launch. So much work went in and I'm just, I'm so moved by that. You know, I'm just this girl from Hamilton near Glasgow who just writes songs and suddenly, you know, all these people are like getting involved. It's wonderful. It is pretty magic actually. I really feel that. <laughs> So it sounds like a tour is coming together. Is that right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. A, a lot of really strong, yeah, beautiful minds, commitment, um, skill, imagination, a lot of stuff that, that making it work. Really what are you involved in the live in in the live uh, adventure? I was at the album launch. I did I did front of house for that. I'll try and be as much as I can. You know. For, if I'm around, I'll be on there because I'll, you know, yeah. I'll, I like doing front of house. <laughs> Ray, <laughs> yeah, I'm front of house, definitely. Ray, what do you have planned for the tour? How far are you going? Where are you going? What, what are you looking forward to? We've got some. We've got um, some gigs. We just heard from uh, Loud in London, and they're offering us quite a few nice gigs. Um, but they've got this. I think it's going to be an ongoing thing because once you commit to one gig. A lot of people that, that set, set gigs don't want you playing anything either side of a gig for a few days. It's just about audiences because that's an issue in London. It's definitely an issue. There's a saturated situation going on. So uh, that's wonderful that they're interested because they're, they're fixers and they'll, they'll get us some nice gigs to kick off the album, I suppose. So we've got the Bedford, which is wonderful, on the 12th of March. We've got a lovely little venue in Kentish Town in London, a very well-known music venue called the Map Calf uh, on the 2nd of May. And then it looks like we might be doing the 22nd of April at O2 Islington. We're just waiting on confirmation. It's all kind of London-based at the minute, which is cool. Then I've just contacted a few festivals, Red Rooster Festival. Um, there's a festival in Birmingham, a folk festival. And when we have folk festivals here, they're not strictly folk you know you could go and play the kind of stuff we play but because some of it's a little bit downbeat and maybe more intricate in terms of instruments like a flugelhorn or a, or a violin that attracts those kind of listeners I think that they, there's a big widespread of instrumentation on the album and I think that that makes it interesting for different genres of you know venues and festivals that get set up we can be you know we can fit into those pictures really so you're 
you're using that variety of instrumentation in the live show as well. We yeah. use it in launch and, uh, and it was beautiful. Yeah, we, the, the sound in the launch was wonderful. And we were hoping to get at least flugel horn keys and all those kind of things on at the Bedford. It's a, it's a, it's a packed night that night. Um, but when we get to Mapcalf, the place is ours for the whole night. And we'll do, yeah, we'll get the pretty much the same thing, the album on there. Might have to invite people off and on the stage because it's not that big. <laughs> but it's a it's a lovely venue. The work that I think the music works very well in intimate settings too, just because of the storytelling. That feels nice. All right. Yeah, all the all the songs stand stand, you know, as acoustic versions as well. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. We've done uh, that. Yeah, we've done yeah. a couple just leading up to the the launch, we did about four or five acoustic gigs, and that was with like a uh, bass and acoustic guitar, or um, bass, acoustic, and electric, and two backing singers, no kit. And that work went down really well, people loved it. So, yeah, mark of a great stuff. song, right? Strip it down to its necessities and see how you can exactly, yeah, <laughs> it really is four chords in the truth. We'll know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you're so right, that is true. Yeah. Terrific. I just want to point our listeners one last time. Raymusic.com, R-A-I-E, music.com. Uh, get there, read the bio, listen to the music, go to SoundCloud, buy Ray's album, enjoy it if you want to hear uh, what she's captured in a, in a beautiful life experience. Uh, captured ably and beautifully by our friend Wes Maybe. And uh, as, as we button up here, my one last question to you is, uh, and I'll ask you both, starting with you, Wes, who should buy this record? What type of listener is going to uh, most benefit from hearing Ray? I think that's a, that's, a, that's a wide variety of people. I mean, initially when you hear it, you think, oh, this is, this is kind of mature music. So, you know, we're, we're, we're probably talking a, a slightly older generation. But then once you start getting into the topics and the lyrics and, you know, some of the issues that are being tackled, this is for everybody. I mean, you know, a lot of the songs are about young people, you know, like Blackbird. One of the songs is about, you know, young, young grime kids on the estate, you know, on the projects, just uh, writing their writing their raps and, and, you know, listening to the Blackbirds, inspiring them and, and stuff like that. So. It should be bought by anybody who likes music, you know. Um, let's stop comp- compartmentalizing. Like Ray early- said earlier, you know, there's, there's no point in compartmentalizing. There's no point in saying, I only like hip hop. I only like blues. I only like jazz. You need to broaden your horizons. And, and all of us need to do that. You know, I, I had to do that as well for my job. You know, there's, there's, there's people who only deal with metal, for example, or just classical music. I love dealing with all of them because they cross over, you know, they all inspire each other. So, you know, just open the floodgates and, and let it, let it come in. You'll never know what you, what you're going to like. <laughs> okay. As much as I support that, that behavior and everybody should expose themselves to, to uh, something new and, and find the greatness in things other than what you're familiar with. Ray, let me ask you the question a little differently. Who are you singing to? Um, I think to people who want to hear stories that open up their heart, they maybe open up their uh, their view of the world. I'm singing to people who want to be who want an experience that takes them somewhere in their imagination or helps support the the cares that they have about the world. Um, I feel like I'm singing to people of all ages, and actually, my my audiences are all ages. I really do get a very big cross section of people, and also from different cultural backgrounds as well, because um, some of the issues that I tackle involve issues around race. You know, I celebrate my age, but I feel like age is something that music transcends. If someone's speaking the truth about something, if if we're telling the truth or we're probing into something with colour and visions and images and words that test and tackle, we, you know, we're going to touch people. So I feel like the music is for people who want to listen to the truth. That's really what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs>
Amazing. Well, one last time, listeners, raymusic.com, SoundCloud, to hear what's coming from Ray and Wes. And I really uh, am honored that you guys would do this show with me. Ray, thank you very much. And Wes, always thank you, man. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you, John.